Okay, suppose that x has this geometric distribution with parameter p, then what's the mean? That is, if you're going to make a whole bunch of independent Bernoulli trials, where each trial is a success with probability p, and, and you're interested in, you know, you're interested in thinking about the, the time until the first success, on, on the average, how many times do you have to do this thing before you see the first success? before you see the first success. What's the expected number of trials you must make until the first success? So that's that's what we're after here. Expected value of, of x. It's the sum. Okay, so I'm going to take all the possible values it can take. Um, and remember, it, it must be at least 1. And go up to infinity there. Times the chance that x equals k, right? That's that's what the expected value of x is. Um, of course, since we have a geometric random variable there, I know exactly what that probability mass function is. It's 1 minus p to the k minus 1 times p. And let's see, that p is a constant. I can go ahead and pull that out of the summation sign, outside of the summation k times 1 minus p. And now what can I do here? I don't know. There, there's several things you can do here. Here's a popular trick, and it's good for, for you all to, to see this and um, make note of, of what we're about to do here. Note that this looks a lot like 1 minus p to the k, right? It looks a lot like that. You know, if I got rid of that k and just had this stuff raised to a power, and then I'm summing, I've got an infinite sum of something that's bounded by by 1, an absolute value raised to a power, I know how to deal with those kinds of sums, right? Yeah, but I don't. I have this annoying k here that I'm multiplying. So what can I do? Well, note that, note that all of this, though, it looks a lot like that. What if I took the derivative of that stuff with respect to p? If I differentiate this with respect to p, the k comes down, right? I get k times 1 minus p to the k minus 1 times the derivative of p on the inside, which is, or times the derivative of the stuff on the inside, sorry, which is going to be negative 1. So I've got to further compensate by putting a minus sign there. So all this stuff can be expressed as exactly that, right? So I can say that this is the sum k goes from 1 up to infinity of negative ddp of 1 minus p to the k, right? And um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull that minus sign out, put it right there. Now, question for you. Can you interchange the order of uh, uh, differentiation and summation? Well, certainly you can if you have a finite sum. If you have an infinite sum, mm, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But it turns out it's okay this time. I'm going to pull that derivative outside, okay, I'm just going to say it's okay, it's okay to do that, All right? Um, this is, uh, goes from 1 to infinity of 1 minus p to the k, alright? Now, I know how to deal with that sum, I think. That sum is almost the same as the sum from 0 to infinity of all this stuff. Remember, this is bounded by 1, so so this is really a lot like this, right? Then I've got to subtract off um, that term where k equals 0, right? So if k equals 0, then this is, uh, this is just a 1. Make sure you can go from this step to this step, okay? Make sure you understand that what we've done there. If it doesn't make sense to you, just note that this is almost the same as the sum from 0 to infinity of all that stuff. That's what that is. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to move up there. I'm out of space. So all this now is equal to negative p times the derivative with respect to p of 1 over, let's see, that bottom is just p, right? Minus 1, okay? And now, uh, guess what? Let's see, the derivative of all this, hmm, the derivative of all of this is just, uh, it's the same thing as the derivative of, let's see, with respect to p of 1 over p, isn't it? Yep, sure is. So that's negative p times the derivative 
with respect to p of p to the negative 1. Right? Now all of this is just the same as, you know, if I take the derivative of, of p to the negative 1, minus sign comes down, I get p over p squared, right? Which is just 1 over p. Very good. That's the expected value of a geometric. It's 1 over p. So for example, the expected number of times, the expected number of times, Marty must attempt to start the time machine before it actually starts is just 1 over uh, p, which was 0.1, right? Which is 10. Very good. Good job.